Another useful model system to consider in quantum mechanics is the so-called rigid rotator. Like we've done for the harmonic oscillator, we're first going to consider the classical physics of rigid rotators, and then we're going to translate what we know from classical mechanics into quantum mechanics. All right, let's look at the model. Uh, let's first consider 2D rotation in a plane. Uh, you can consider this as rotation of a particle on a string. So um, here we are. Again, what we want here is a molecule, and this molecule is rotating in space. And it's a rigid molecule because we're going to get, consider the bond between the two atoms to be uh, rigid. So it's a rigid rotator. But let's say uh, keep one of these constant and then we can consider the other one rotating about that if that's the center of rotation. That's similar to say a particle on a string. So let's say we'll uh, attach, we're going to hold on to this ed end and out here we're going to have some particle and we're going to whip that around. We're going to hold our hand constant and we're going to uh, whip this around this way or maybe we can go the other way. Let's say we go this way. And so this will trace out some sort of circular orbit. So rotation, um, a rigid rotator can be considered as just a particle rotating on a string and this is just in two dimensions. Okay, so there's a model system. Let's introduce a coordinate system change, go to polar coordinates. What do we mean by that? Well, here's our, we, say we said it's rotating in a plane, so here's our uh, Cartesian uh, coordinate system X and Y. So instead of uh, trying to describe the motion of this particle in terms of X and Y, we'll find that it's actually quite easy or much easier anyway, to describe this in terms of polar coordinates. So this will be the angle between, say, the x-axis and the vector which joins uh, from the center of the rotation to the particle. And the length of the vector r, or this will be r, the length of the vector r will be the length there going from the origin to the particle. So with this definition of polar coordinates, we could do the um, coordinate transformation value of x will be r times the cosine of that angle. So that's that projection down here. That would be the x-coordinate. And the y-coordinate will be r times the sine of that angle phi. So you project here, that's the sine. So that's how we can go from one coordinate system to the other. The advantage for particle on a spring to go into um, polar coordinates is that r is constant. R is constant. It's a particle on a string. The string is not stretching. The bond is rigid. It's a rigid rotator. So therefore, instead of having two variables, x and y, that change with time, we only have this variable, phi, changes with time. All right, so now we're going to express uh, all of our, our classical mechanics in terms of polar coordinates, where r now is a constant. Okay, so let's define some things from uh, classical uh, physics. Maybe remember, um, if you have a rotating particle, you will, ha you will generate an angular momentum. And the angular momentum is a vector and is perpendicular to the plane of rotation. So let's say, for example, here's the uh, rotation. If the particle is rotating this way, going around this way, then the angular momentum points this way and it's perpendicular to the plane of rotation. If, on the other hand, the angular momentum is going the other way, then the angular momentum vector points down. If it's the same velocity, it's the same length, but it's now pointing down. And this is an example of the right-hand rule. right hand rule is if you take your right hand and curl it in the direction of the um, rotation then your thumb is pointing up in the direction of the angular momentum. Okay so a rotating particle generates an angular momentum perpendicular to the plane of rotation. We can also define a moment of inertia I. I is the mass of the particle that's rotating uh, times the a radius of the uh, circle it's rotating in squared. 
So for example here, this is certain mass m. The moment of inertia of this is m times r squared. That's the moment of inertia. And the angle momentum l is the mass of the particle times the velocity times r, the radius of, of the circle that it's rotating in. All right, so those are the uh, s some uh, key concepts in classical physics that's useful for a rigid rotator. The last one is the energy. The classical energy for a rigid rotator is just the angular momentum squared divided by 2 times the moment of inertia, Lz squared over 2i. Now you might notice that um, we somehow went from a vector L to a scalar component Lz. So by convention, this is taken as the z direction, the um, axis that the angular momentum lies in is along the z axis. So this really is the length of the momentum vector along the z axis. Angular momentum itself is a vector and this will be the component of the vector along the z axis which is the entire angular momentum. All right, so that's it for a classical description of rigid rotator. We're going to take these concepts now and develop the quantum mechanical description.